Hi guys, it's Steve here from PVE Tuning Shed. Um, welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video, I am going to briefly explain how we get our OEM gauges to work with our Max ECU. Um, it will be cross-platformed from all the Max ECUs and you'll probably be able to use a similar method um, using your EMS of choice. If it can't do it, you've probably got to upgrade your EMS and get proper ECU like a Max ECU. Um, so my weapon of choice today, um, what, what I found is I'm often just doing things and I just carry on and do things and do things. Um, you know, in this case, I was just programming these gauges. Uh, and then I thought, it's one of the questions that's often asked on some of the pages, how can I get my gauge to work, yada, yada. So I often just carry on and do these things and don't think any more of it. But if you don't know how to do it, clearly it's handy for someone to just show you. So that's what I intend to do. Um, I'm, I'm gonna try and be a bit more proactive with these little videos because as I say, um, you know, what I just take for granted because I'm doing it every single day um, may save you a few minutes in the future. Hey, it may save you half hour, hour, I don't know. If you've not seen it or done it before, that's why. So uh, my weapon of choice, um, what we're gonna be using today is a, this is a resto mod and it's a 1970s DBS. This has got the um, the AM08 4.7 V8 Aston Martin engine in from the later vehicle. Um, it's having all sorts of stuff going on. We've just fitted ABS and um, the, the guys who are building this have fitted a Lexus power steering rack. So we're just sort of um, messing around with the CAN bus in the ECU to try and um, ensure everything works in harmony. Um, this is fitted with a Max ECU Pro um, and also the PDM20. Um, and Ultimately, we've got lots and lots of GPOs, so we need some ground outputs for what we're going to be doing today. Um, and we're going to use the original gauges. Um, there, there's currently one missing here, which is the um, speedometer, because they're having a custom one made. So there's a big hole there for a minute, um, but ignore that. Um, so we'll concentrate today on just the, let's do the water temperature gauge. Um, and I will show you how you can calibrate that to work with your ECU. Um, I find this is quite important uh, because there should really, certainly on a modern engine or any engine really these days, if you're going to use like a, a modern EMS is, is there only needs to be one temperature sensor for argument's sake, one coolant temperature sensor. You don't need to have another temperature sensor. We, we, it happens quite often. Um, someone's doing a resto mod and they have a temperature sensor for the gauge. They have a temperature sensor for the engine management and they very often have like a, a, water, a water system as well, coolant system, which has got a pump, which relies on yet another sensor. So we've got three sensors there. So not only is that three points of failure that we've added in, if any one of those go wrong, you've still got to investigate all of it. Um, I had a, an argument with a chap, um, not an argument, but I was trying to sort of explain to him that like if your, you know, if your gauge temperature is reading hot, regardless of whether the engine is actually hot or whether the you know the actual temperature sensor for the gauge or the gauge is broken any of those things like you've still got to investigate whether it's that sensor that gauge or if the engine is getting actually hot so you've saved no time and say that is reading normally but the engine temperature is actually getting hot you know you've got all these points of failures um and you're better off just having one because like again some information is often worse than no information, to be honest with you. If, if your temperature gauge there is saying it's absolutely perfectly normal or at 30 degrees and the engine's boiling its little knickers off, um, you know, it's better than no. So we'll have one temperature sensor on the engine, cuts down on a load of wiring engine bay wise anyway, um, and we're gonna rely on one sensor to do all of it. And then, as I say, if for any reason that temperature sensor goes wrong, not only does the gauge go high, wrong, whatever, it gives you plenty of chance to fix it because you'll know what's wrong. You haven't got to go investigating three different sensors, one which you can see visually through the software and one on the gauge, which is just complete like nonsense. It's how it used to be done, I get it. Um, but modern EMS is where you can do kind of what you want. You can create your own tables. It makes perfect sense to just use that one temperature sensor and we'll just output those to the gauges. Um, so one of the other things that we can do with Max ECU certainly is we can, we can add 4D. So if we've got, say we've got one gauge, one Smith's gauge, um, and that's just reading water temperature normally, but we do happen to have an oil temperature sensor on this engine, we can have a little button, press that button, and then that will look at oil temperature, and then the gauge will read whilst that, you know, be it a, a flick switch or a, um, you know, 
a, a, like a push and hold button, like a momentary switch, it will then transmit the temperature for the oil. So, you know, we get sort of more functionality through not a lot of work. Um, so let's get the laptop down, we'll connect M-Tune, we'll turn the ignition on and I will show you how this works. Right, okay, um, hopefully you can see the gauge here. You can see where I'm moving, because although you can't see me, I'm still pointing at things, because I'm not very good at this. Um, entirely unprofessional. Regardless, um, you can hopefully see the gauge is currently on zero, and hopefully you can also see the software. Now, how do you wire this gauge, Stephen? So you wire it in the exact same way that you would normally wire your gauge, only instead of your, where your single wire goes off to your sensor, um, you would wire that to a GPO out, a grounding out, so a low side. Um, the, the ECU, um, in this case, we've got, we've got loads of GPO outs. Um, so, so yes, you just wire your, where your sensor would go, that single wire, wire it straight to a GPO. Um, in this case, um, where's my coolant gauge? I have set this up already, I'm just running through. So I've set this up as a user PWM. So if you're not familiar, select there. Um, I'm, I'm just usually typing in there and then you can just set up any user PWM you want. Um, I've got quite a few set up in this because we've got all sorts going on with this car. So once we've set up our user PWM, I've just brought it up here, called it coolant gauge. Um, so the frequency, I'll, I'll be brutally honest, um, between 50, 150 is, is more than adequate with this. Um, what you'll find is if you go outside of those parameters, you won't get a um, full swing on your gauge. But um, just for argument's sake, so this here, I've set up this table here as our temperature. So as you can clearly see, the gauge goes from like 20 to 120. So um, there's no point in going out beyond those, um, you know, parameters, those, those, those available bits of data. So um, this is just taken straight from my coolant temperature um, coming from the from, from from the ECU, so axis sorts, cool, coolant temperature there, um, and then I've just set this duty cycle here. Now I'll show you what happens. So if I just put in thirty, um, we'll find that the the water gauge will start to move. So all I have done basically is is clearly these are slow acting just by the, the technology that they are. Um, you know what we're trying to do really is use old tech with with new. Um, but you can see how slowly it moves, so you know, you'll have to wait. So I advise that you start low. I, you can clearly see I've set this table up already. Um, so I know at 120 degrees is at 52% duty, but you can see now that half, halfway up nearly, we slowed, we slowed down. You can see now that, we, you know, we're, we're about halfway, so it's at 30% duty. If we go all the way up, so if I just tap in 52 here, um, you'll say that you'll see that that gauge ends up spanking all the way up to the end. So ultimately, what we need to do is just jot down at what temperature that's reading, uh, and then we can just you know so say at 52% that it goes all the way up to 120. We know that we can put 52 there, and then we keep adjusting it. So you know we let's let's have a look. So we want it to read uh, 70. So we put in 13% duty because I've already put that there. Hopefully that will then start plummeting down um, to 70. Now it's going to take a while as I say because the gay tech is old. Right there we go. Um, so you know back down to 13 so you know 70 degrees is pretty much bang on. Um, it is very slightly up because the engine's slightly warm so it's falling a little bit but let's zero this out now. So all of your tables will have um, you know in this case the oil temperature gauge um, was a very slightly different duty so um, you know, you can go through your gauges, every single one of them will, you know, it ultimately would have depended on the type of sensor being used, how that gauge was calibrated. Um, I have found that, you know, a lot of the water temperature gauges, certainly the Smith's ones are the same, um, but different sizes of them aren't often. So, you know, there you go, a nice simple way of letting your ECU deal with it. And you can control all this, you can come back round and, you know, adjust it and, and do whatever you want to do. Um, so yeah, there we go. Nice, simple little little video that I hope you find interesting. Right, thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, I hope this has been useful to you. Um, if it hasn't, at least it's sort of, you know, giving you more insight if you're not aware into what these ECUs can be doing these days. Um, you know, it's a simple, really simple task uh, ultimately, but 
like I say, for me, it gives you that extra bit of functionality, that extra bit of um, reliability out of your ECU and what you've got there. I mean, you know, as I say, you've got this this highly reliable, really fast, clever bit of kit there. So it seems crazy to me not to use it. Make use of all of your outputs. Make use of all of your outputs. There you go. Um, so, right. Thanks ever so much. See you all again. Um, yes, please tune in again and hit the like and subscribe and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and I will see you all again. Thanks ever so much, guys. See you soon. Thank <laughs> you.